Hey everyone, it's Jeremy Osterberger with Big Magazine. Today I'm joined by Dwayne Dixon, Vice Chairman, U.S. Oil, Gas, and Chemical Sector Leader at Deloitte Consulting. Hey Dwayne, welcome and thank you so much for offering some of your time to Big Magazine. Thanks Jeremy, glad to be here. So Dwayne, let's dig right into it, man. What is going to drive the chemical industry's recovery heading into 2021? Well, I think the first part is that some certain parts of the chemical industry have been doing very well as they've supported a lot of of the efforts uh, in the pandemic. So some, some of the industry still has a little bit of momentum. Those areas that have lost a little bit of momentum due to the economic shrinkage or, or less mobility, um, they're primed for a comeback. And, and they, were, uh, they were in a little bit of a cyclical uh, downturn uh, prior to the pandemic. So they should be coming out pretty fast. The places where we're going to see growth are in uh, microelectronics and advanced materials for renewables, uh, new, new, new technologies for recycling and storage, and certainly, uh, as I said, the PPE and, and uh, solvents for cleaning and so forth that are, that are being used every day during the pandemic. Hey, Dwayne, how does this 2020 election result, uh, what, how does that outcome affect the chemical industry, uh, especially in the next, uh, let's say, year or two, but even uh, even on a macro level? How about, uh, you know, two or four years down the road? I think as we uh, look at what happens, obviously, we, it remains to be seen a little bit about, you know, you know how, how much uh, change the new administration is going to drive. But it, what we can for sure think about is uh, probably a little bit better trade situation with China is expected. And uh, that helps the chemical industry because a lot of uh, tra a lot of commerce flows between the U S and China. Uh, in addition, we'll probably see um, the, the new administration become much more uh, intense about uh, climate and, and environmental issues. And, as a result, we could see new regulations and uh, and you know new new compliance requirements for the industry in, in certain areas of the environment. So, Dwayne, oil prices are likely to be lower for longer. You know, what is the impact on chemical manufacturing and on demand for chemical products and a low oil price and really low natural gas price environment? Well, I think we have to think about um, one of the big end markets for. Uh, the chemical industry is oil field services, but you know while the price of oil is low there that that probably stays stays a little bit distressed but that 's really the only negative part of lower for longer oil and gas prices that those are both feedstocks and energy sources for the industry and and while those are low um, it 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 is very um, you know very easy to adjust to lower prices and, and uh, you know, be able to obviously pass along some of those lower prices to end customers. So, you know, it, it, it I guess if you really look historically, um, low oil prices or high oil prices are things that can be adjusted to. And during the transition is when most of the industry makes its money. Right. Hey, Dwayne, let's flip over into uh, a topic that so many folks are interested in and, and will drive a lot of uh, change in our industry for some time, and that is ESG, environmental social, environmental, social, and corporate governance. You know, these mandates are driving change uh, within the downstream industry, including chemicals. You know, what are some of the avenues the chemical industry can take uh, to be sustainable? Well, that's a great question. So the first thing is uh, – some of the products that the chemical industry makes and that are used in our everyday lives, you know, think about packaging and, and uh, containers for beverages and so forth. Um, these single use items uh, really, um, there's been a bit of a sort of public outcry on these single use items. And there've been, you know, there, there've been boycotts, there've been, uh, there've been edicts to, uh, to stop those types of things in the past. But uh, I think the industry will will show that it's it's really getting serious. They they've started the partnership to end plastics waste, and they're they're, they're all taking steps to get more involved in recycling, not only mechanical recycling but also chemical recycling. So first, I think they're going to become you know sort of much more accountable for the products that they make and the end of life of those products. In the second area, they're going to be looking at decarbonization strategies and. These are, uh, you know, 
probably very advanced technological and, uh, and engineering solutions for electrifying crackers or looking at really uh, clean energy sources and, 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 you know, really trying to change the mix of both the energy they consume and, and the feedstocks to a, a more, a more sustainable renewable slate. And so flipping over to more operations, you know, what are, what are some of the most lasting impacts of this kind of virtual remote environment in regards to, you know, chemical plant operations? What do you, what do you expect to see? You know, we've seen the short term impact, but Hey, what, what are some of the things that may last, you know, one, two years and maybe even longer? So the, the, the things that we're seeing right now are probably mainly focused on automation and analytics and, and, and ability to just be more productive in, in the jobs. Um, the longer term effects we're going to see are, are better training vehicles, uh, better information at the fingertips of an operator or a maintenance worker or an engineer. Um, and, and, you know, through either virtual reality or augmented reality. Um, and, and then longer, longer term, we'll see probably very, very common for, for difficult and potentially dangerous tasks uh, like cleaning out vessels and so forth. We'll see that start to be more the domain of robots uh, than it will be the domain of people and we we'll take them out of the dangerous jobs. So there's a lot of really good positive things coming from this whole digital advance and it's been accelerated in, in recent months by the pandemic uh, as all of us working virtually has sort of shown us. Yeah, Dwayne, absolutely. Hands-free cleaning, uh, automated welding, automated dashboards for even plant controls. Uh, yeah. Pretty yep. incredible what we've seen in the, um, uh, the expedition of some of this in the past, you know, six, eight months has been uh, uh, pretty incredible. So. It is. Hey, well, well, Dwayne, we, we really appreciate you joining us today. I want to know you're welcome to come back on anytime to talk chemicals with us. And uh, please keep us in mind in the future. Thanks for being on. Love to do that. Thank you. It was great. And as always, we're grateful for our audience. Please like and share this recording with colleagues. And for more industry videos and podcasts, visit BicMagazine.com. Remember, everyone, it's what we do together that counts.